I did a video last week basically talking about serving two masters. And under the comment section of that video, someone left a comment stating, I'm going to clean it up before I'm 50. I want to at least live a little before I hang it up. Seeing that comment is what made me decide to make this video. Before I address that comment specifically, I want to kind of go back and kind of tell my story. I became a Christian. I started following God when I was five years old. Um, my family did not go to church. I had three old, older brothers and I'm the only girl and the youngest. And so one day, I'm not exactly sure how this transpired, but a church bus came by and, you know, offered to take us to Sunday school. And so my mom was okay with that. So every Sunday the bus would come and myself and my three older brothers would go and we would go to um, Sunday school. I can't say exactly what happened um, in Sunday school that made me have this love and desire to follow God, but it was something about that that really like changed me and really made me want to have a relationship with God, even at the young age of five. And then you know how they always say Jesus is God's son and um, God is also our father. So the, how I kind of took it being such a young person was that Jesus was my half-brother. We have the same father because my oldest brother, we have different fathers, but the same mother. So I was looking at it that way. Okay, if, if God is my father um, and God is Jesus' father, then Jesus must be my half-brother. So as a little girl, you know, I played with my bar Barbie dolls and baby dolls. And I would be in the room, you know, talking to Jesus because I'm thinking, okay, this is my older brother. And I would just talk to him. And it's like I always would talk to Jesus. I would always talk to God. When I was um, nine years old, I got molested. And it's kind of like my life took a turn and went downhill from there. And at the age of 10, I wanted to commit suicide. I really thought about it and had even came up with how I wanted to do it at the age of 10. But because of the Ten Commandments and one of the commandments being thou shalt not kill, that's the only thing that really stopped me from going through with it because I did not know if I died at that moment because I'm killing myself, will I wake up in heaven or hell? And the last place I wanted to be was in hell because I felt that I was living hell on earth. You know, what had happened to me, I was depressed, you know, at this point, suicidal, and I just was not a happy child. I was, you know, I was no longer the same after being molested. So nothing changed in my life, really. You know, I just got older. I still, you know, was dealing with depression, dealing with all these feelings, anxiety that I had. So I was drinking at a, I, you know, I was drinking at a young age and started smoking at a young age, and I do not condone that for anyone. So this particular situation that I'm going to speak about, it was around, I think I was about 18 years old, and it was a person, I didn't know the person who house it was, they was having a house party, but I knew someone that was going there. And so I asked my mom, can I use her car to go to this party? And she was like, okay. So I drove myself to this house party and they had alcohol. And like I said, I, I, with me, I never liked it to taste of alcohol. So any drink I had, had to be a mixed drink. And even though it was a mixed drink, I could still taste the alcohol. So I really didn't drink that much. I would just drink, get a little buzz and that was it. So at this particular house party, they had mixed drinks, but the drinks they had, they was like real sweet. You could not taste the alcohol. So I'm drinking, but I'm not thinking about, okay, there's alcohol in this. So I'm just turning it up. You know, we're at a party, the music is playing and everybody's just having a good time. I'm drinking, I'm drinking, I'm getting buzzed. I'm, you know, getting high and everything like that. So I'm feeling, you know, a little looser, feeling better and everything. Next thing I know, I don't know how I went from being in the living room, dancing, listening to music, to being in the bathroom. 
And at that moment, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, okay, what happened? I don't even remember walking to the bathroom. And that's when it, I realized, oh my God, I must have blacked out. And even though I'm thinking I must have blacked out, the first, the next thing I did, I started automatically talking to God. I'm like, God, I don't know what's going on. I think I might have blacked out. And because um, I don't remember how I got from dancing to the bathroom. And I just couldn't remember anything. So I'm like, God, please, you know, don't let anything happen to me. Don't let me do anything crazy. Just take care of me. And then I blacked out again. The next thing I did, I came to myself. I was sitting on the couch and I was talking to a guy. Don't remember how I got there from the bathroom to now sitting on the couch talking to the guy. So we're actually in a conversation because when I when my mind came back to itself, I'm actually talking to him. Don't know what the conversation was about. Don't know who the guy is or how I'm even talking to him or what we even talking about. So in my head, once again, I started talking to God. God, please, um, um, this is the first time I ever um, blacked out. I never um, thought I would ever black out because I don't like alcohol. God, please don't let anything happen to me. Please take care of me like that again. Then the next thing I know when I came back to myself, I'm standing up talking to um, a girl that stayed at the house. So she was like, well, we're getting ready to shut down the party and everyone's leaving. So I'm sitting there, I guess I don't know if I had a drunk look on my face, a confused look or whatever. And she was like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, if you don't, if you don't think you could um, drive home, you can stay here for the night. But in my head, I'm thinking, well, I don't, I don't know you. I don't, you know, I don't know the people who, um, who house this is. And this is what I'm saying to myself in my head. So I'm like, no, um, I'm okay. I, I'm, I'm, I just drive myself home. So I'm like, I'm still, you know, I still, I still have alcohol in my system. So I'm like stumbling out to my car and everything. Well, to my mom's car. And so I get in the car, I sit down. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat. And as I'm sitting there, I'm seeing other people leave and everything like that. And then the, the house itself, all of a sudden, I see the, all the lights turn off in the house. So it's like the lights are off. Everybody, I guess, in the house then went to bed. Everyone's gone that drove to the um, party. And so I'm just sitting in my car. And it's like, I'm saying to God, God, I know I'm too drunk to drive. I said, I'm not going to stay here and just sleep, sleep it off in the car. I want to go home. And I know I'm too drunk to be driving. I shouldn't be driving. But please, God, just let me make it home safe. I don't want to hit anyone. I don't want anyone to hit me. I don't want to hit a tree. I don't, you know, I, I don't want it, the police. I don't want to be swerving on the road and the police see me and stop me. So the whole time I'm, I'm talking to God, so I finally cranked up the car. So I started driving and I'm like, no, let me roll down the window because I need some cold, cool air to hit me on, on my face. So I rolled down the window and then I'm sitting there. I'm like, I need to concentrate. The music is gone, but I cannot concentrate and drive while the music is playing. So I turned up the radio. So it's like, I'll have no radio on. And I got the window all the way down. I let both windows down, all this cold air coming in because I didn't want to um, doze off. So as I'm driving, I get to the first stop sign. And every, and when I get to the first stop sign, I'm like, thank you, God, thank you, God. And then you know how like those things on the road, I guess they're like um, lights or reflectors or something, but they're like, if you hit them, they go bloop, 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 bloop. And it kind of lets you know that you're either going to, um, in the other lane or you're um, going off the edge. And so they put those things there. So like the whole time on the parts of the roads that had those things, I drove on those on purpose so I could hear that bloop, 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 bloop to keep me focused and to keep me awake because I did not want to, you know, wreck my mom's car. I did not want to hit anyone. So as I'm driving, I get to the first like big intersection where there's an actual stoplight. And on my side, it was red. So I'm sitting there in the car and I'm like, still just talking to God, please, you know, every time I get to like an intersection, a stop sign or whatever, I'll make it either 
stop it, you know, end up stopping or if it's a green light, I make it across safe. I'm like steady talking and thanking God. And so as I'm sitting there, a car is, I'm going this way and the car is coming, you know, across. So I'm like playing, praying that it's not a police car. It was just some random car. And that, that was like the only car, it was like one or two o'clock in the morning on the weekend. That was the only car I seen from the time I left the house until the time I actually made it home. So it's like my conversation from, from that house to I got home was, God, please don't let anything happen to me. So I finally made it home, finally made it into my house and got in my bed. And the whole time I was like saying to God, you know, I would be lying to you if I told you I would never drink again. But one thing I know, I would never get this drunk again because I do not like the feeling of blacking out and not having control of myself, not knowing what I'm doing or have any notion of what someone else may or may not be doing to me. And I said, that's the only thing I can really promise you is that if I make it home safe, I promise you that I would never get this drunk again. I'm not saying that I would never drink again, but I would never get this drunk again. And so... Like I said, I did finally make it um, all the way home safe, did not wreck my mom's car, did not, you know, end up in a ditch or anything like that, just made it home safe. And I'm telling the story to, to say this, like the comment said, I'm going to clean it up before I'm 50. I want to at least live a little before I hang it up. I was 18 years old drunk to the point that I was blacking out, driving a car that I shouldn't have been driving one or two o'clock in the morning, just so I could make it from one location to the next location. Anything could have happened to me in the party itself. Anything could have happened to me in the car. What if I would have had that mentality after I got molested and wanted to kill myself and then and then I got to the point that I was so mad at God that I walked away from him. I accepted Jesus even though that happened to me, I still accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I was baptized when I was 17 years old. My relationship because we never went to church as a family. We did not have a church home. The only time I went to the church as a child, like I said, when we was going to Sunday school and it was just then it was just me and my brothers. We never went to church as a family, but I still wanted to have a relationship with God. I didn't have a church service, you know, a, a, I did not go to church, but my relationship with God was just that, a relationship with God. He was my father and I loved him. Well, I still love him, but at that time I loved him with all my heart in spite of me being mad at him because I felt that all this pain I was going through as a child, he could have stopped it. And I was mad at him for that because he didn't stop it, because I was unhappy, because I was depressed. But even though I was mad at him, I never stopped talking to him. Even though I was mad at him, I still had a relationship with him. Now, just imagine if I had the same attitude. I'm just going to live my life to the fullest, yellow, and I would have got in an accident and died at that time, being 18 and drunk, and I would have you know, died on the road. If I did not have that um, relationship with God, where do you think I would have went? Where do you think my soul would have went? Because as I was driving, I wasn't thinking about, I know I did not want to kill anyone. And I know I didn't want to get in an accident, you know, and get killed, wreck my mom's car and all that. I know I didn't want to do that. But at the same time, anything could have happened. And if I would have died at that moment, where do you think my, my, I would have ended up in heaven or hell? I would have ended up in heaven because of my relationship with God. Even though I wasn't living a perfect life, even though I was upset, even though I was angry with God, he was still my father. He's still my father. He still looked after me. He still took care of me because he understood my trials and tribulation. He understood my heart. He knew where my heart was. And he knew, you know, the love. And, and even, like I said, in spite of everything, he knew the love that I have for him. And I still want to be in his presence. And because of that, he still took care of me. Because I belong to him. 
I made a choice to belong to him. And so because of that, if I would have died that night, I would have went to heaven. But if you don't have a relationship with God, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you're saying, okay, I want to party. I want to do this. I want to live my best life. Oh, I, I, I will decide to become a Christian later. I will decide to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior later. I would have decided later. If I would have had that same mentality and got in an accident and died, I would have ended up in hell, not having a relationship with God, not accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I would have died because you have no, you don't know, life is not guaranteed for one. Two, you don't know when you're going to die. It's a lot of people who have died young, very young. And to say, I'm going to wait until you're basically, you're basically choosing hell at this, at that point. If you don't have a relationship with God, honestly, I know this might sound harsh, but it's only two roads, the, the wide road and the narrow road. The narrow road leads you to God. The wide road leads you to Satan. It leads you to hell. And if you don't, ha if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, why would you expect him to come get you once you die? Why, why, why would you expect him to say, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that soul belongs to me when you rejected him? Remember Jesus in the Bible, um, I think it was in Matthews, um, these people was like, Lord, Lord. And Jesus, you know, I'm paraphrasing. And he was like, I, I, I don't know you. I never knew you. You know, they said, oh, we did this for you. We did that. He was like, I never knew you because they never had a relationship with him. And so that's why a lot of people, uh, there is a lot of good people out there. But it's not about being good. It's about have you chosen Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you said, okay, I'm going to try to be, like I said, it's not about living perfect. I, I wasn't living a perfect life at age 18. I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. But regardless if I was high, regardless if I was sober, regardless if I was drunk, if I was mad, however I was, I still talked to God. I still had a relationship with God. I still read my Bible. I still wanted that, that communication. I, that communication was open. God said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. And my attitude was, I'm not going anywhere. So God, you just stuck with me. Even if I had a bad attitude, you just stuck with me. I'm not going anywhere. You're just going to have to deal with me and my attitude. You know, and, and that's how I felt. And that's how I talked. And so it really just kind of touched me to see that this person is saying, oh, I want to have fun. And then I, when I finish having fun, then, then I think about, you know, changing my life. But what if that think about changing my life part never happened? then what and if you're waiting till you're 50 what are you and if you have kids um if you get married and have kids what are you teaching your kids because you're supposed to guide your kids the right way to go so are you telling them the same thing live your life now and then when you get older then decide to turn your life over to god have fun now and then decide to live because you it, you know it's like being protected Day one, God gives me, you know, gives us a person, a, a, a guardian angel to like look after us. And if you're rejecting God, you're rejecting all that. You're rejecting his covenant. You're rejecting his um, protection. You're rejecting everything he's willing to give to you. You're rejecting that. And so you're already making a choice then that if I die, if you, if you don't know God, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, you're basically saying when I'm die when I die I'm okay with spending eternity in hell because once you're dead how are, how are you then gonna accept Jesus Christ then you're already dead so you never know when you're gonna die and so like I said when I seen that in that in in that video that comment in that video that's what made me want to do this video. So for anyone out there who's thinking, okay, I can just party, live my best life now. I'm young. I got, I got the rest of, you know, I got the rest of my life to do that. I got the rest of my life to do this. 
life moves fast and life will catch up with you before you know it. And like I said, it's a lot of people die young. And, and then even if you are saying, well, my 50th birthday, I will turn my life over to God. Who And, and your 50th birthday could be tomorrow. What guarantee that you're going to wake up tomorrow? You go to bed, fine, healthy, no problem. But you might not wake out of your sleep to even celebrate your 50th birthday, to even turn your life over. So the best time to choose God is right now. If you haven't, right now is the best time because the next second, it could be your last. So you never know. And so that's all I want to say. Peace.